Hi, hello everyone, and thank you for joining us today for the first webinar of the series all about our product and their uses, organized by the Community of Practice on Ontology of the CGRR Platform for Big Data in Agriculture. Today, uh, we are pleased to have with us the FAO team, Ima Subirat, who is the, the leader uh, and agrovoc manager, Christine Colsus, agrovoc curator, and Andrea Turbatui will uh, introduce us to Agrovoc, uh, content, uh, purpose, objective, along with the current processes and tools enabling communities to contribute. As you know, Agrovoc is a very large thesaurus, uh, much used for describing and reference um, bibliographic references, first in the FAO AGRIS large uh, bibliographic reference database, and by any other databases. And Agrovoc is recommended uh, as a source of keywords in the CGIR core metadata schema that is used by our repositories for publication and data. So this is a key tool for our community. So now Ima Subirat will start the presentation. So thank you so much, uh, Celine and Elizabeth for these invitations. We are very pleased to be here. I'm going to present Agrobox together with uh, Christine and Andrea. What we are going to uh, talk about is to introduce a little bit Agrobox. Uh, we don't work alone. All this work is done together with uh, a big bunch of editors um, that I will, I will talk about as well. I will introduce as well the concept model and the link open data element um, in Agrovoc, and then um, usage and how to access Agrovoc and uh, linking since our graphic records and data sets is going to be introduced by Christine and um, my colleague Andrea is going to be the person that is going to finalize that presentation talking about one new element in Agrovoc which is this multi-scheme management and we are also going to introduce a little bit what we are doing with CGIR that Elizabeth has already started to talk about. So this is our team, it's a very small one. We are four members. I hope that Alejandra is somewhere in the audience. She promised to join as well. So I'm the Agrobot manager, but uh, Kristin is the Agrobot creator. Andrea is the Agrobot technical lead and Alejandra is supporting all our work um, is a multicultural team as well. Um, Alejandra is in Peru. And so uh, here you have the email address and you also have um, our Twitter account in case that you want to follow us. So what is Agrovoc? For those that don't know much about Agrovoc yet, um, is a control vocabulary that covers all areas of interest of FAO. And this is quite broad. This goes from food to nutrition to agriculture fisheries, forestry, environment, etc. It's published by our team in FAO, the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations, and is edited by national, regional, and international organizations. It's extremely popular, and it's very popular in low-income um, countries as well. It has been there since the 80s, therefore has a long history and it's very much related to Agris, as Elizabeth um, was mentioning. And Agris is a database that is focusing on recollecting um, the scientific production in every country. Therefore, Agrivoc had the chance to uh, be known and renowned by almost all our member countries very early in the 80s. Uh, one of the probably the biggest value that Agrovoc uh, has currently and, and was quite uh, early uh, the vocabulary implementing um, some of these um, standards was uh, link open data and uh, is an ESCOS concept scheme as well. So it's using W3C um, standards on how to manage KOS, um, knowledge organization systems. It's big at least for us, is pretty big, is uh, 37,000 concepts. And the big value is that we have seven, uh, up to 750,000 terms uh, that are available in 39 languages. Um, it's aligned uh, through the link open data elements. Agrivoc has been aligned to more than 20 multilingual knowledge organization systems. 
related to agriculture or related to certain number of concepts that are more cross-cutting and uh, that are also um, like, for instance, um, I will show you now and and um, other type of vocabularies that are having, they have concepts that are important for Agrovoc and therefore we want to be linked. For those that don't, I presume that everybody knows very well what the link open data impl implies, but let's say it is a set of recommendations and, and a way to standardize the, the, um, the way that um, different vocabularies can be connected to each other and to identify concepts that are the same in different vocabularies to link it and therefore those that are using these vocabularies afterwards have a chance to uh, it maximize the discoverability, the availability, the interoperability as well of their um, information systems. Agrovoc, uh, Fizarro's content in, in English, Russian, French, Spanish, Arabic and Chinese uh, has been released and is CC by International 3.0. So yeah, as I, as I mentioned before, um, we have uh, a lot of work to do. In, uh, it's not easy to maintain 39 languages, as you can imagine, but we have a very, very committed organization supporting FAO in this process. Here you see that uh, we have um, 22, the most recent one is the Belarus Agricultural Library from the National Academy of Sciences in Belarus. And we have partners that are taking care of the language versions, which are essentially the first 18 plus Belarus. And then we have other organizations that are covering thematic areas in Agrovoc. And this is what Andrea is going to show you later. But these organizations are essentially aquatic sciences and fisheries abstracts, which is a kind of system very similar to Agris, and FAOLEX from FAO, both, the Land Portal Foundation, and the International Center for Agricultural Research in the Dry Areas, ICARDA. Agrobok is based in a concept model. So um, concept model that is using, as I said, SCOS as the standard uh, to make it possible. So it means that we have different concepts that you see that there are these uh, circles and we have relationships between them, could be brother, can be narrower. And then these concepts have um, labels, um, properties that uh, provide or enrich the, 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 the way that we describe this concept. So the concept milk products uh, is, um, is the way that the milk products is the, the property to identify that this concept is, is, is pronounced or uh, mentioned like that in, in English, for instance, and it's the same with the cheese and, and the other examples. Thank you. So here is a, a better way to represent it. So you see the concept rice, which is in the center. And then uh, this rice has, um, um, broader relationship with uh, cereals and several narrower uh, concepts that are those on the bottom of this image. And you can see all the language translations uh, that we have um, that are identifying rice in different languages. So it's just an, uh, I hope that nice and clear way to show that um, um, that it's not really a complex system as it is an ontology, that's clear, but the fact that we are having such amount of languages is enriching quite a lot these concepts in different ways. It's, um, well, as I mentioned before, Agrivoc is uh, fully linked open data compliant, and we are uh, linked to different uh, thesauri. Uh, which are, these are some of the examples. And the size is also identifying the number of concepts that have been linked to Agrovoc. We consider Agrovoc, and, and this is very much related to what Andrea is going to show, we consider that Agrovoc has changed over the last year from being a Cesarus to start becoming a kind of semantic hub. And, um, and this is what is between the link open data element and the multi-schema management is really supporting Agrovoc to move towards 
a possible way to host mini vocabularies, if you want, or sub vocabularies or other vocabularies in the context of the Agrobog infrastructure. And this is the turn of Christine. Hello, everyone. This is Kristen. Thank you, Emma, for a really great introduction. So I will walk you through a little bit of the content curation. So yes, as Emma said, we have up to 39 languages. And just this morning, somebody wrote to us and said, this, you know, this all sounds great, but why don't we have Indonesian? You should have Indonesian. Agriculture is very important in Indonesia. And we wrote back and said, we would love to have Indonesian, but we um, only generally have languages that are curated by institution or a group or a network of some kind. So their language coverage very much depends on having the, this group of volunteer institutions and networks. And as Emma said, they might be looking after a language, they might be looking after a concept. We have a really good soil network in Germany that covers both German and soil technical issues. So these are just the ones that have at least 150. And uh, you can see here we have the concept, we have the broader, narrow, we also have some non-hierarchical relationships, which is quite interesting in AgroVoc, like but the um, other links to things in the, in the uh, thesaurus. So the content comes to the network. So yes, people sometimes also ask that to uh, come and work for us and get paid, and that doesn't work like that. So uh, it's usually institution, often national, but also international, like ICARTA. They will manage a topic or language or both. Some of them actually have networks behind them. So for soil and for aquaculture and fisheries, and now also coming in for land governance, there are expert networks contributing concepts and terms and definitions. And that is a real strength for us because we cannot possibly cover all of the interesting topics that AgriVoc has a mandate for. And to be up to date, we need to talk to experts to make sure we are including keywords that are relevant for today's research. And that's one of the reasons we're very pleased to be talking to the CGIR network today, because you will, I'm sure, have ideas of things we might be missing. And um, it's invaluable. And I can, an example of one of these things is that a colleague from IFPRI wrote to us in February, March, and said, oh, you know, we should have something on COVID-19. And thanks to that, we actually added a whole small collection of COVID-19 related terminology because that was a request from an expert. So we rely on you as well. This is a distributed editing. The uh, editing is all done on a platform called Vokbench, which lives at the University of Vergata. Our colleague Andrea looks after that. And the suggestions normally come in through Vokbench. It's an online system, so it's much easier to track. And they may be suggesting a concept, a term, which is a translation or a definition. Often we have a fair bit of discussion back and forth about something. How does it fit? What is the difference? What's the difference between wave velocity and wave speed, for example? It needs to be unambiguous across languages. But we do also suggest uh, have suggestions coming in by email. So again, write to agrivoc.org and we can discuss something. This is what it looks like in Vokbench. Very exciting. We can see that somebody is, is putting in, um, reorganizing the fisheries concepts. They're putting in a new pref label in Italian. So what happens then is that um, I look at it in Vokbench on behalf of the Voc Agrivoc team. We look at uh, that there's no duplications. We look for, make sure there's good definitions. We look for alignments to other thesauri and controlled vocabularies. We try and make sure that there's relevant uh, terms in the UN languages. And if it's all approved, the good news is we have a really agile workflow. We have a release every month. And the last one was just yesterday, the 1st of June. And that means that some of the concepts I was looking at, for example, last week, you can see on the right here, there's a, those are new ones that came in in the last month. And I think some of these actually came in from the CGR list that our colleague Marie Angelique was looking at. So thank you for the suggestions. And those are now already published in AgriVoc, thanks to your suggestions. So yes, how is it used? Traditionally, AgriVoc was used to as, as keywords, metadata for printed resources. But increasingly, we're seeing it used not just for printed resources, but for electronic resources, for websites, for data sets, for contents in data sets, and for research data. 
which is another reason it's really important for us to make sure that we have the correct and current and up-to-date terminology available. And this is very much about standardization access to uh, information and data. Yes, it's also about semantics. And here's an example of the classic way of using it, where we have publications, both at FAO and in the NCG space, where you can see Agrivalk keywords are listed as ways to access the information and also go deeper in it. We have exciting ways to access Agrivalk. Now, this depends very much on who are you. If you're a human, if you're an editor, you might look at Vokbench. If you're a use, human user, you might look at the Scosmos, which is a publicly available page you can browse. You might look at the Sparkle interface to run a more technical query. We also have a website. But increasingly, we're seeing that the shift is moving to machine-based interaction with Agrivalk. We have some old services, old legacy tools, but more and more, we're seeing that services connect to Agrivalk using APIs, URI resolution, and the Sparkle endpoint again. And this is just the access for the last last 12 months, which is about 10 million. And that is just human users looking up something. We were surprised in a good way. Yes, and I'll wrap up just to say how we are engaging with the, the CIR. So we've uh, had a lot of good intentions, and now we're actually moving into practicalities of how we can uh, work together on this. And it's things like improving coverage of the concepts. And uh, there's work going on by Marie Angelique to map the agroontology, the crop ontology uh, concepts to Agrivox. So we have alignments in this. And through that, we're also discovering concepts we're missing. So I think last week I added about 20 agroontology terms already and there will be more coming in. But we're very happy to hear from, from you as a network about new concepts, translations and definitions and things that you think uh, we should go deeper in. I think with that, I hand over to Andrea. Hello, everyone. This is Andrea, and I'm going to present you what is new in Agrovoc, especially the multi-scheme and multi-hierarchy approach. As Ima said, the Agrovoc uh, is a, a thesaurus which follow the uh, SCOS and SCOS XL standard. It means that there is a scheme. In this case, there is one main scheme, the Agrovoc scheme, with uh, several concepts over 37,000 concepts in a specific hierarchy. Then uh, there is also a sub-scheme, which is Langbok. In the past, it was, it was not possible to have a different hierarchy, so Langbok could not have another hierarchy. With this new uh, technology, which I'm going to present and explain, now Langbok can have their own hierarchy, and this means that now we are able to host inside Agrovoc several schemes having their own hierarchy. At the moment, there are three schemes inside Agrovoc, which are Langbok, Faulex, and Asfa, and each of these schemes can have their own hierarchy. What is the meaning of having this multi-scheme and multi-hierarchy management? First of all, all the different schemes hosted inside Agrovoc, they should use Agrovoc concept. This means that if they need to have a new concept which is not currently inside Agrovoc, first of all, this concept needs to be placed inside Agrovoc in, in, in a specific place using the uh, standard Agrovoc uh, hierarchy. And then these, uh, these uh, sub-schemes can uh, use this, uh, this concept and place in their own hierarchy. In this way, it is possible, first of all, to, uh, to use all the infrastructure which is currently used by Agrovoc and also all the different editors. But how can uh, this be possible? First of all, inside Bokbench 3, as you can see from the screenshot, you can see all the information associated to a specific concept. The first step is to place the concept, this concept, also in another scheme. For example, you can add this concept in, uh, in the scheme ASFA, in the ASFA scheme. So you will add this concept, which still remain inside Agrovoc, also in the ASFA scheme by using the, uh, the user interface. And this is something that different the, the editors can do. Now, as you can see from the screenshot, this concept belongs in two different schemes, the main Agrovox uh, scheme and also in the ASFA scheme. 
the next step that an editor needs to do is to place this uh, this concept in the hierarchy according to the other scheme as you can see from the screenshot uh, this concept is already placed in the agrovoc uh, hierarchy because it is using the scos broader um, property to place this concept also in a in a different hierarchy you need to um, to, to click the uh, the add uh, bottom inside the, the broader section select the specific broader property which you are going to use and this is done because each scheme will use a different broader property now the the user the, the editor in this case decide to place this uh, concept under this other uh, concept economics using this other uh, hierarchy uh, hierarchical property this means that this concept is under is in the hierarchy according to agrovoc and in a different hierarchy according to the other scheme using a different property so in this way we are able to use the multi schema because we are we, um, workbench is able to host several schema in the case of agrovoc means that Agrovoc, the main Agrovoc schema contains all the concept, and then user can decide to place a subset of this concept also in another schema. And then, and this is the real, the real new feature, the editor can decide to have a different um, hierarchy in different schema. So in this case means that this schema, this, sorry, this concept can belong to several schema. The important thing to understand is that uh, there are um, some aspects. First of all, that all concepts belong, first of all, to Agrovoc. This means that the, the, all the editors of Agrovoc can enrich this concept with uh, new information, mainly new translation, new definition. And this new information provided by the editors are automatically reflected on the different schema. From the technical point of view, what this means when someone wants to download a specific hierarchy? Because to download Agrovoc, you just need to download Agrovoc and remove the specific hierarchy. But when you want to download all the data regarding a specific schema and also the hierarchy of that schema, first of all, you need to download the data, the concept belonging to the selected schema. So remove all the other concepts then you need to uh, deal with the official uh, agrovoc hierarchy this means remove from the data you are downloading the information about the scos broader hierarchy the official um, hierarchy hosted inside agrovoc and then you need also to change the specific hierarchical property used in this in that schema you are interested in with the scos broader because the idea is when you are downloading a schema you are downloading this data to load it then on another tool other tools are not able to deal with specific broader property normally they are able to deal only with this cost broader property so when you are downloading the data about a specific schema you need to transform the hierarchy using a specific broader property into discuss broader property and then also remove all other hierarchical property which belong to other uh, schema as i said before the main benefit of using or in uh, of using a sub schema inside agrovoc is that the different community will get uh, all the translation all the definition provided by the agrovoc editorial editors and as, as, as him said before, all editors are around the world. And are, at the moment, they are managing 39 languages. So all the data regarding the sub schema will be present in up to 39 languages. And, and now I will present two very uh, simple examples to better understand. In this case, we are dealing with the concept land management. As you can see from this uh, Workbench, uh, Workbench 3 screenshot, you will see that this concept belongs to three different schema. The ASFA, the main agrovoc schema, and the Landvoc. And since it belongs to three different schema, it is naturally that it will be in three different hierarchy. 
regarding agrovoc uh, to see the hierarchy regarding agrovoc you need to look for this cost broader property this means that in this case land management is placed under natural resource management regarding asfa the other schema this concept is placed under resource management and finally regarding landvoc this concept is considered as a top concept it means that it is at most top level and it has no other concept uh, broader broader to it so in this case this is what a normal an editor will see inside the editor tool which is block bench and in this other example i'm showing what the normal users will see about a concept that is present in different uh, schema as i said before when uh, editors uh, are downloading their own schema they are able to see only the data regarding their own schema for example in this case the concept public health as you can see is placed in three different schema asfa faulex and agrovoc with three different hierarchy if you go to uh, to browse only agrovoc in this case using Scosmos, you will see that public health is placed under health. If you go to another site which is displaying the uh, Faulex concept, you will see a different hierarchy. In this case, public health is placed under the concept state. And finally, if you go in the ASFA um, site, you will see that public health is placed under another concept health and safety. The main idea of this example is to show that it, uh, the same concept can be placed in several different hierarchy. The concept is still the same, so it maintains all the main information, all the different translation, all the definitions, but can be placed in different schema, uh, different schema according to what the uh, community of that, that is managing that particular schema is interested in. If you have any question, uh, now we are able to uh, answer all your questions, or also uh, you can contact us on the email agrovoc.fau.org. Great. Thank you, Ima, Christine, and Andrea for presenting Agrovoc, its curation process, and Vogbench 3. We are now at our question and comment session. This is my Angelique Laporte. I'm with uh, the Alliance of Biodiversity and, and SEAT. And so, so first, thank you for the presentation. That was um, that was good. I mean, that was a very great overview of, of what um, is possible with uh, uh, Agrovoc and and the suite of tools that you are developing. And my question was regarding like the submission or the contribution of new terms or, or like new concepts or labels in Agrovoc. Is there a way to um to i don't know to 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 know which organization contributed what like some sort of stati statistics about like the 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 contributors like yeah some sort of citation that we can use and go back to our organization saying oh look i've contributed like that many terms to to agrovoc for instance hi this is Kristen. i can take that no, we don't actually have statistics on that. Um, Andrea, we, could we track who submitted a concept? We probably could through Walkbench. But it's such yeah. a collaborative effort. So somebody might contribute a, a concept, somebody would contribute to definitions, someone else might contribute the definition. So um, we don't have direct citations for who's authored something. That's a great question. Andrea? Yeah, if it, when inside Vocbench there is the history uh, tab in which you can see all the, the accepted um, suggestion, so the new concept, uh, new terms, uh, new definition and so on. So the data is present. Uh, at the moment we do not uh, really um, expose a lot about this information because uh, there is also the problem about the different uh, editors uh, um, providing information for the same concept for example as Christine said if uh, an editor can um, provide a new concept then other editors can uh, start adding new, new, new terms for this concept 
So in this way, it is a bit complex to uh, really um, isolate the work of each editor. But in theory, the data is there and uh, we may uh, try to find a way to, to, um, to provide this sort of information about the, the different contribution of the editors. Yeah, and I think it's, I mean, it, it's okay if there's like several people cited for one contributing to one concept. I think that that's good also to show that this is like really a community effort, as you said. So I think that would be a good feature to, to have, at least at the organization, maybe not at the people level, but at least at the organization level, if that was possible, that would be good, I think. Thank you. So yes, the, the information is at people level. So because uh, um, Vocbench keep track of each action of each user, each action that has been accepted. So then we may need to uh, transform the information at people level to the organization level. At the moment, this is not uh, fully implemented, but it can be a new feature in, uh, for, the, for the future release of the, the tool. Great, thank you. So I can see that Joseph, you also have a question. How different is AgroVoc from uh, Google Scholar? Well, quite a lot. Um, while AgroVoc is a semantic tool, and is used to enrich metadata that could be about publications. Uh, Google Scholar is a search engine that is harvesting metadata about publications. So um, let's say that they are, don't have too much in common, as far as I know. Okay. Google Scholar would be closer to what we were saying at the beginning, like Agris. Agris is a search engine that is harvesting metadata about publications, also about um, thematic topics of interest for FAO member countries. We have about 12 million um, records, and we are going to ingest now some millions more. And we are using Agrivoc to make semantically uh, meaningful uh, what we have there. Agrivoc has something also very important when we talk about search engines that could integrate Agrivoc is the, the fact that we have 30, uh, 39 languages. So it means that you can, if, if your, your information system can use um, semantic technologies that are considering multilinguality, Arabic can be extremely useful to make sure that a person is searching in Arabic in your information system, but this person might also read English and therefore through Agrivoc could discover also publications related to what was searching in, Ara in Arabic in English. You know, this is the purpose behind Agrivoc is to facilitate the discovery Cover, discoverability of um, data and resources um, in, uh, in the web. Thank you, uh, Ima, for, for answering the question. Pierre Luigi, we can take your first question. So, hi, I'm Pierre, Pierre Buttigieg. I work in the Helmholtz Federation for metadata and I run the environment ontology and other such things. Um, I had a question regarding this uh, semantic hub that you showed. It, it shows that Agrivoc nicely interoperates with other resources like Gamut, um, et cetera. Are there any checks, um, like real-time checks to avoid redundancy or let's say definitional con conflicts between these, or is that more a manual process that pe if people notice it, they tell you? Well, well, here I will I will introduce you the non so technical answer, and then probably Andrea wants to say something more about the new feature that is available in Workbench. So, in the way that we have aligned vocabularies, is that we had an automatic process, but uh, that was uh, aligning, um, yeah, automatically, you know. But then we had uh, human, so humans looking at the quality. Of these alignments. Um, so, in parallel, Christine, uh, when she is, uh, and not only Christine, the, the editors, when they are creating or proposing new concepts, 
uh, it's very well uh, welcome uh, the, the, the possible alignment with vocabularies that they know um, that also have the concept. And this happens many times because before introducing a concept in Agrovoc, sometimes they have to double check what is the situation in other vocabularies. And before, what they are doing simply is to reuse the word that they are doing already to make sure that the concept has the right definition or has the right, the right labels or whatever. The point is that <clears throat> here, um, probably, and then you want to introduce a little bit this new feature in Vogbench, which is the automatic and manual alignment. Okay. Okay, first of all, the, um, the alignment between Agrovoc and other uh, Tesori is done using the, uh, the standard um, SCOS uh, property to establish this alignment between two different concepts. So this means that inside Agrovoc, inside Agrovoc, there is just the link to the concept to the other vocabulary. A Vocbench also is able to, uh, from the user interface, if you uh, click on that link, to display all the information coming from the other vocabulary as well inside the tool itself. At the moment, there is no automatic um, checking after the, uh, the alignment has been established. We are working in Vocbench to um, to perform this sort of automatic check, but the problem is that uh, it is very complex because sometimes uh, uh, these sort of alignments also deals with the natural language. So it's difficult to, uh, to perform these uh, post uh, alignments. At the moment, these alignments are done mainly manual. As Imma said, Sometimes uh, to perform this first task of alignment to a new uh, thesaurus, uh, to a new external thesaurus, we can run several tools to provide a list of suggestion. But normally this suggestion needs to be manually validated by the user. In the future, we will, uh, at the moment, yeah, at the moment we are trying to, uh, to automate, um, to help this process via some automatic uh, algorithm, but it's not an easy uh, task. Thank you. And just to add, it's a great question, just to highlight, it's part of the quality, background quality checks we do continuously. Um, the, the second um, question, well, actually, I'll, I'll skip the one. So often when you're doing translations, and I think at one of Agrivox as a, as a UN-linked resource, the translations are a real asset to the community. But there are often linguistic nuances, like uh, ethno-linguistic nuances to words and their meanings. And I know the UN uses interpreters rather than translators in much of their work. Is something like that going on here too? I mean, or how do you handle like slight nuances? I can take that. Well, generally I would look at um, the FAO term, the FAO terminology database, and also the UN thesaurus for the multilingual UN languages. So that they're trusted authorities. We're not doing straight translations ourselves, but we're making sure that they're as accurate as possible. But we know there are differences in things like wood in French, wood as in wood and wood as in timber. There's there's difference in this. They so may have need to have what they call um, qualifying qualifying disambiguators. So you might have to have an explanation in one language to explain that this is this is what we mean here. So it isn't always a straight translation. That's one of the interesting things about multilingual thesauri to make sure it's unambiguous as possible in every language you're looking at it. Thank you. Um, yeah, it, it's really encouraging to, to, again, in the UN system to have that capability and that resource base. Um, having tried it ourselves, it's, it's a real challenge. So. Now we're really trying to recommend that people use trusted authorities, trusted glossaries, vocabularies, Ter terminology databases that we know are already validated by technical experts. Thank you. Ahmad, would you like to ask your question to Kristen? My name is Ahmad Saihu. Uh, thank you for this webinar. Uh, my question is how we can start in order uh, our Indonesian term in agriculture can be integrated with Agrofoc. That's our question. Thank you. 
So basically, um, for a language to be added, we need someone to be curating it, to be looking after it. So if there's a question in three years' time that we know someone is looking after, for example, we have Swahili added by the land portal, but we know the land portal is the person, is the entity we can talk to about that. So if there's an institution behind you, it's there's mm -hmm. no official agreement or such, but it's you know right to Agrivoc talk about who you are, who your institution is, what you're interested in, and then we would we would discuss what um, terminology is most important to you, and yeah. there's training involved. And uh, we also have the option of doing quite a lot in uh, Excel spreadsheets if people find VocBench difficult to work in. But the main thing is what terminology would be useful for you in Indonesian and uh, how that could be brought in. It's, it's all volunteer institutions, so we're very happy to have more join the network. Here I might, I might add something just to, to illustrate a little bit why. Um, in the past, before um, this team uh, took over Agrivoc, there were a lot of individuals contributing to Agrivoc without institutional support. So individuals, people move around and they move from organization to another organization. And uh, it happened that some languages got orphaned and there was no curation and institutional support, and nobody knew in some cases in the institution where the person was working in about uh, the work that was done with the Agravoc. So this is why when we took Agravoc over, one of the first things that we did was to, um, um, let's say, to move this individual commitment to institutional commitment in order to assure that the institution, so for any reason the individual that is contributing now moves to another one, um, the current institution can continue the work. And this has happened, for instance, recently with the case of our Italian editor, that uh, our we, our former editor left at the VOC, and uh, now we have another focal point in, um, in what is the organization, the Ministry of Agriculture. The Agricultural Library. Yeah, which is sitting in uh, in the ministry. So, uh, and this is what we want. We we need really this institutional commitment, even if the institution is not contributing that much. But we need continuity uh, when we talk about managing such a such a semantic tool. Okay. Thank you, Abinet. I can see you have a uh, you raise your hand. Yes. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, thanks for uh, that presentation. I'm Abinet from the International Livestock Research Institute, mainly working on content management of uh, the CG Space Repository. Uh, so my question is related to integration of Agrovoc with other systems. So I think Agrovoc already has a public API for integration with uh, other systems. Uh, but we were not somehow able to do that uh, with uh, CG Space. So we haven't actually integrated Agrovoc with CG Space, but we have uh, built a control list of Agrovoc within CG Space, and that's how uh, we're trying to use it. So I was just curious if there is anything new that can help us integrate Agrovoc with D Space for uh, CG Space. Thanks. Actually, I think that uh, we have all the tools to integrate Agrivoc in different information systems, and then I will give uh, the um, uh, uh, space to Andrea to clarify that. But I, I know pretty well this space and the, the, the issues coming from this space. So when we try, and it's, it's not the, un, the only case, it's your space, because I have been managing this page and an instance in the past it was almost impossible to, to integrate a vocabulary like Agrivoc. And I was always forced to have, um, um, to download vocabularies and to do it uh, offline. So unless this space is not changing something in, that, uh, in, the, in this regard, um, it's very little what we can do in Agrivoc. I mean, we could, I mean if, if, if you like, we could start a conversation with the technician that you have. Uh, for the city space, this is not a problem at all, and we could um, present all the tools that we have, which is we, we are having more and more. So, but as far as I remember, the limitation is coming from 
um, this case by default. Okay, thanks for that. Uh, we are trying to upgrade to uh, version 7 of uh, uh, GSpace, which is a major uh, release, so maybe we uh, try to get in touch with you and see if there are uh, things that have changed with uh, GSpace to help us integrate with Agrovoc. Thanks for yes. your report. It sounds very good. Uh, I will be very happy to do so, and also I'm very curious about whether this space is um, is is improving something that re in, in in this regard because there are a lot of repositories in the uh, food and agriculture <clears throat> agricultural domain using this space. So it could be very interesting to know whether there is anything that we can do. So please feel free to email us and we can talk. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Uh, Musumi, would you like to ask your question? I see that you raised your hand. Yeah, hello. Uh, hi, uh, th uh, thank you for the brilliant presentation. I represent the National Council of Applied Economic Research, uh, which is based in uh, New Delhi. And um, uh, so my three questions are first, uh, like what are the challenges that you face uh, in translation? Uh, many of it was discussed, but again, uh, from your side or possibly if anytime in future, if it can be uploaded in the website, that will be very good, not only for those who work in food and nutrition security, but even for those who work in other areas. So I'm primarily an economist, but I work in food and nutrition related issues. So that would be great if the challenges uh, can be highlighted. And also, uh, how, uh, I understand that uh, with this thesaurus in hand, uh, one can uh, look up uh, research papers which we were probably handicapped earlier because we didn't uh, know how or what the word translated stands, for example, in Chinese. Uh, widely spoken, but again, it was quite difficult uh, to understand. So uh, did you come across instances where wherein people share, shared uh, their experiences that because of the translations which were done, uh, you were able to cull out information on indigenous agricultural uh, or aquaculture practices? Uh, that's something uh, specific I have in mind. Thank you. I can start on the translations. We don't actually do the translations ourselves. So it would be an editor who would do that. And that's why when we add a new concept, we're really strict to say we really need a clear definition, at least in English, but also in any other language of Agrivoc as possible, because the editors need to know we're talking about Georgia the country and not Georgia the state, for example. It has to be really, really clear. So that's the main, I would say, uh, problem we face, that a lot of the older concepts don't have definitions. So that's something we're much more uh, working strictly about that now. And we are welcoming more concepts on economic and social policy issues where we're looking at um, vocabulary collections at FAO on that. And we've also just reached out to our colleagues in the Indigenous Peoples team at FAO to have them look at our Indigenous terminology to make sure we are up to date and what we might be missing. So we don't have clear-cut examples of them actually using it, but we are working to include, to improve coverage on that to make sure that uh, we can uh, document and people can help access the research relevant to those topics as best possible. Thank you. Pierre Luigi, I can see that you have a comment uh, regarding the, the previous question and uh, discussion about this space. Just briefly to share our experience there. So um, we built a um, semantic, well, natural language processing and semantic tagger on top of a DSpace instance that UNESCO uses for its ocean best practices system. And um, we, we did a bunch of uh, work to see what the most feasible route ahead. And we really decided not to mess with the DSpace base code in order to implement that because it would make subsequent updates very, very difficult. Um, so all of that code's open source. You can you can check it out if you want to, or you can always reach out to us um, about how we did that. You know, plugging in semantic tagging um, into a DSpace instance to create a search interface on top of it, um, which will be extended as part of the UN Ocean Decade. Just a comment there. Oh, that sounds very good. Um, I might get in contact with you afterwards, maybe, and so that we can get a little bit more of the information. 
So Pierluigi, would you like to ask another of your question? So I was I was wondering, so again, as an ontology developer, we develop the resource and we see people using it to different degrees in the in the wild, so to speak. And I'm wondering um, if, if you were to hold up an implementation of Agrivoc, like a service that really uses it well, um, what comes to mind? We are, well, uh, we are now in Agris implementing, um, we are, we are going to, we want to integrate the whole capabilities of Agrivoc in Agris. And one uh, of the things that we are taking into account together with multilinguality is um, the, all the hierarchy and uh, the relationships that uh, Agrivoc has. Funny enough, even uh, though Agris and Agrivoc are extremely uh, related, we have never made use of all the potentiality that Agrivoc has to retrieve the contents in Agrivoc, not only through the search, but the browsing. So for me, uh, one of the things that I would like to do in a very short time is to really have Agravoc as a full semantic layer in the back end of Agravoc to support search, which is doing it in a way, but also to help people to navigate through all the content of Agris through the structure of Agravoc. So for me, this would be the perfect scenario. And I think that it would be very good as well to illustrate the real value of Agrivoc when we are talking about information systems like, for instance, Guardian or Agris or Ocean Docs is also a good example, actually, um, that uh, have a lot of content and um, they would like to uh, enhance um, the, um, the retrieval of uh, all the data in a way that any user can make the best of it. I don't know if I fully uh, answered your question with this, but... Um, yes, it was just, just a more pointer in a direction, but I, I understand the uh, situation. I think um, it's now in the next five years that these technologies, semantic tech, is really going to show its uh, capabilities. So it's it's good to know what to work. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Then, um, Joseph, um, you can uh, ask the question. How can institutions sign up for Agrivoc? How do you sign up for Agrivoc? Do you mean to use it? Yeah, to contribute to it. I mean, if it's about to use it, you don't need to. I mean, you can simply come to our website and to make use of all the different uh, types of tools that we have to make um, use of Agrivoc, like the slide that Christine was showing before. If you want to provide content, uh, you don't have to sign up in a way. What we need is to get into kind of agreement and to understand what is what what is what your organization going, um, is going to do, and how you could um, coordinate uh, your work with a FAO core team, a global core team. But you are talking about usage or content um, contribution. For example, if I wanted to access messages uh, from, through Agora, for example, how do you get messages from Agora? Through Agora, sorry. No, just to access the content, you can. There's a public interface. You can browse all the concepts there if you'd like. It's in the presentation, which will be shared. But if you write to us, agrovoc at fao.org, I can also send you the links directly. And then we have very good news because we are preparing a new Agrivoc website, which should be very soon dedicated only to Agrivoc under the file domain. So maybe then it's going to be even easier for you to get uh, or to discover Agrivoc uh, than now, because now we have Agrivoc on a platform that's called AIMS and uh, gets a little bit hidden. So this should be in the worst scenario at the end of July. Well, great news. Um, thanks. So I can see that Carlos, you also have a, a question about Landvoc and non-portal. Not really a question; it's just a comment that uh, 
we in the LAM portal and LAMBOC, we are also interested in the uh, in the use of uh, of control vocabularies in the space and the automatic tagger. Uh, so will be it will be nice if we can exchange an emails with the Agrobox team about that. Carlos is one of our expert land governance editors. So hello, Carlos. We'll be happy to discuss that. So thank you very much, Christine, Ima, and Andrea for your presentation. And thank you all for attending the meeting. I will now hand it over to Elisabeth Arno, who is the COP leader. Thank you, Céline. So I want to thank our speakers, Ima, Christine, and Andrea for the very comprehensive presentation and also the participants because we had a, a lively um, discussion around Agrobac. Thank you everybody, thank you for being connected and uh, see you at the next uh, webinar.